few years ago, there was a fad for making business cards out of printed circuit boards. It's a pretty neat thing to be able to hand out to someone. A little card with a USB port on it, even though most of them were completely pointless. When I first saw one, I wanted to make one as well, but I wanted mine to have at least some token utility to it. And given what I do, it made sense to make it a MIDI device. So I was thinking about how to make a tiny keyboard or a piezo buzzer synth, something like that. And then it hit me, a miniature stylophone. Not only does it have the utility of being a novelty MIDI input device, but it also justifies being a bare PCB because that's what a stylophone keyboard is. So this was about two years ago and here's the prototype I etched at the time. And this has not aged well. Um, I tried to template the keyboard uh, to stop it from oxidising, but I found the process quite difficult to get to work. And uh, the templating is so thin that you can see that it's it's um, just worn away where the stylus has hit it. This isn't finished. Um, I spent ages trying to think of a way of either having a cutout in the middle that you could clip the stylus into, or maybe having a strip along the edge that you could snap off and then use as a stylus. And I, I was looking into, um, you know, edge plating that part of the PCB, but it's quite expensive to have that done. So for this one, I just uh, used a crocodile clip. So fast forward to a couple of weeks ago when I found this on the shelf and I thought, you know, this was awesome. Why didn't I order a whole load of these? So fast forward to this weekend and well, hey, black solder resist is of course the coolest solder resist. And I paid extra for the immersion gold finish. So the keyboard should remain shiny and functional for at least a little bit longer than the uh, homebrew one. This sort of artistic pixelated patch here is exposed ground plane so that we have somewhere to attach the crocodile clip to use as a stylus. I went for a thickness of exactly one millimeter, which is not a common thickness for a PCB, but it meant that I could form the USB port by doubling up the circuit board. So on the bare PCB, I just added this extra rectangle, which can be snapped off and then reflow soldered in place, just like the rest of the parts. And that brings it up to the two point whatever millimeters it needs to be um, to form the USB port while keeping the rest of the card thin enough to still be called a card. The circuit could have been um, ordered as one layer, you know, because I'd laid it out for etching at home, but that part meant that I uh, had to order it as a two layer board anyway. So all I did with the bottom copper was etch my logo into it so it um, appears as this embossed pattern when you shine it into the light. There is no sound generation on this, it's purely a MIDI controller, but that just means we can make it sound like whatever we want. <laughs> 